you were taught from day one that if it's not to finish, kick out at two, at least two and a half, unless you're taking the pin. You're taught that. And I don't know where this, something happened and somebody said he was knocked out. I don't know. But it was a massive, massive botch. Arguably the most controversial uh, decision of money in the bank. Drew McIntyre did win the money in the bank briefcase. I think uh, he was the, I don't know, Bet Online had Jay Uso as the as the favorite heading into the match that night. But I'm sorry, guys. I need to see Jay Uso as United States champion or earn the Continental champion or something before I see him as a, as a world heavyweight champion. Um, still, he's over. He's a great solo act. Good for him. I just don't see him as a world heavyweight champion guy yet. Um, regardless, Drew McIntyre walks away with the briefcase. He told everybody he's going to win the briefcase. He's going to cash in that night. He's going to get back his world heavyweight championship. The fashion in which he did so, he cashes in while the, the world heavyweight championship match is still going on. He makes it a triple threat match. And then almost immediately, CM Punk shows up. We'll get there, Dutch. CM Punk uh, shows up. Physically assaults the man. I know where your mind Riju, is. At. You see this? You see this? I know he's, where he's your mind is. Dismissing me. Don't get ahead of huh. me. Don't get ahead of me. We'll talk about it. I know where your head's at. I'm talking about the briefcase right now. No, you don't. No, you don't. You I don't know exactly where, where you're going. I don't Anyways. even know where I am. <laughs> CF Punk comes down, brutally assaults this man with a steel chair, beats him like he owes him money. Bashes his head in with a World Heavyweight Championship, which allows Damian Priest uh, to retain the World Heavyweight Championship by by defeating uh, Drew McIntyre to win this match, not Seth Rollins, who was his original opponent. Now, as a result, Damian Priest stays in Judgment Day. Seth Rollins can no longer challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship as long as Damian is uh, the champion, which is the look. The good news for Seth Rollins that's about four weeks. Uh, regardless, um, this was a a very, as I said, controversial booking decision uh, here, Dutch. A lot of people said the Money in the Bank briefcase was wasted this year. Saw a lot of people saying that on the old social interwebs. Uh, what did you think about the booking decision to have uh, Drew McIntyre win it, hold it for an hour and 25, and then he gets screwed over by CM Punk again uh, on the same night? Okay, Sid. Remember, told me to hang on. We're going to get there. I was going to say none of that stuff. Because what I was going to talk about is about one, two, three. Oh, the botch no, finished. No. That's what I knew you were going to talk about. I'm talking about the briefcase now. We will get to the botched I finish. I don't give a shit about the briefcase. This is bigger than the briefcase. Hell, we've had briefcases for 20 years. How many times you see that, the referee goes, whoa, 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 whoa. The big question was, was, was uh, Mr. Priest knocked out? You think he was? No, I think he just screwed up. It's been confirmed that no, he wasn't. That he wasn't? I think he was. He wasn't. He wasn't knocked out. I, no, were you there? I called I, him I, up. His eyes I were open. Him. His eyes he were might open. Have been, he might have been a lock knock for a loop, but his eyes were open. I mean, well, why he didn't he kick at him too? You, you're no, tall. he was looking down the aisle. When it happened, he was looking down the aisle. I look, Was music I, supposed to hit? Nobody that's what hit. I think. That's what I think. That's what I think. I think the music was supposed to hit, and that was what's supposed to interrupt anything. Now, nobody within WWE was able to confirm that to anybody that, you know, reports on such things. But at the end of the day, Damian Priest should have kicked out. It's one of those, whether it was a production gaffe, whether it, well, he was knocked for a loop, whether he, was, he didn't hear the two count, didn't lost count, got lost in the moment. He was staring down the aisle waiting for Drew McIntyre to show up. He didn't show up. He didn't kick out. Happens. It's a sh situation it's a mistake you, at the end of the day you hate that it happened but it happens you were taught from day one that if it's not to finish kick out at two at least two and a half unless you're taking the pin you're taught that and i don't know where this something happened and somebody said he was knocked out. i don't know but it was a massive massive botch I don't think we can talk about AEW botches anymore. This this overlaps all of them. But 
I don't know. Check out Brain Buster, the daily quiz that tests your WWE knowledge with winning streaks, stats, and more. It's time to see if you're up for the challenge. But I mean, but this is something this, this we is don't. This is what see. I'm going to ask you. Yeah. When Drew McIntyre went to cash it in, okay, it turned into a three-way automatically. Yes. Yeah. He has to join the match in progress. He doesn't yeah, have to. He chose to do it. He chose to yeah, do that. He chose to pull what Seth Rollins when, did at WrestleMania 31. Okay, but when he when he joined, mm-hmm. it immediately yes. turned into a three way. Yeah, right triple threat, not? triple threat rules, which eliminated the disqualification. Which, if if the referee had counted three, right? right? Imagine this for a second. If the referee had counted the three because Damian didn't kick out, if he had worked it as a shoot, I'm imagining well, all of it. a sudden, all of a sudden. WWE has some problems on their hands because they had storyline ramifications on this match that Damian Priest would have had to have left Judgment Day if he lost the match. So they would have had to change the story to actually have that happen, right? They would have put the belt on on Seth Rollins then at that point, and it would have been a one-on-one matchup that would have thrown the disqualification into play when CM Punk showed up. So the match would have just ended in a disqualification and would have ended like a, a, a wet f- fart in church instead of actually having a match finish. There's a lot that would have changed had that three count landed that WWE would have had to fix in post, so to speak. So it's an unfortunate situation, SP3, but I think the referee made the right call by saying, oh, he, he got the shoulder up a little bit. He got up a little bit. The match is still going on. And luckily, luckily, the music hit and McIntyre came down and got things cooking again because that was, uh, look, the match was really, really good up until that point. And that just really took a lot of people out of the moment, myself included. It's, it's a sh- thing. Sometimes the mistakes happen. It sucks that that happened. You don't really see that out of Damien very often. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to hold it against Damian Priest, but I, I agree with Dutch that it was a pretty b- big botch that you can't ignore. And I disagree with Rick, which isn't isn't a surprise to many of you. Uh, I don't think the match was that good. I think the match was kind of oh, like sloppy, oh, and I thought that I thought that Seth looked kind of rusty. He looked kind of rusty out there. You know, he's just getting back into the flow of things. I thought Damian had a much better better matchup with a botch last last month at Clash at the Castle with with Drew McIntyre. I thought that match was much better, and I think that the reason why it took uh, that botch took the win out the crowd is that. Yeah, the crowd was vocal the whole night. Toronto was a great crowd, but the match wasn't very good up until that point. And that's why it really took the wind out of the crowd. And it took the chaos that was Drew McIntyre, you know, cashing in and then Punk interfering to really get them back and revved up into the matchup. I think that that match was the the lead. It was still a good match at the end of the day. Solid match, however you want to call it. I don't think it was a very good matchup or a great match, but it was solid enough uh, where it all came together at the end with the chaos that was created. But I thought the booking was the best thing about it with Punk interfering where he not only his obsession, now he his obsession is the yeah. thing that got, got the best of him is his obsession with screwing over Drew. He didn't even realize that he also screwed over Seth at the same time. So the money in the bank wasn't really a tool to elevate the Drew McIntyre and and CM Punk rivalry. I think that the people that were into that rivalry at the start of Money in the Bank, they weren't more into it after Drew got screwed over a third time by Punk. It just reestablishes that Punk is going to make sure that Drew never wins the World Heavyweight Championship. The Money in the Bank was more used as a tool to reignite the rivalry between Seth Rollins and CM Punk. That was very effective. I very much enjoyed that. It set Punk up for the next eight to nine months because it sets up his SummerSlam matchup with Drew if he's healthy enough to do it. And then they can follow up with that feud in the rest of the fall. And then for WrestleMania next year, I think it's a foregone conclusion. It's going to be Seth versus CM Punk. And I think that doesn't need a world championship because now Seth has even more of a reason to hate Punk. And I think that... I'll forget the fact that I thought Seth was rusty in a month or so from now when he gets more matches under his belt. I think we'll see the Seth Rollins that we've all grown in love. But I think that it was very clear to me, at least, as someone who's watched Seth Rollins from his Ring of Honor days to now, he he looked kind of rusty out there, in my opinion. 
that, well, that's fair the, the thing the the thing with uh with this matchup with with McIntyre, I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, the booking of it, him getting screwed over three times or whatever it is, and it's a wide open desert out there that they got room to run around in, and which I like. I mean, I don't, I, I'm not really big fans of either one of these guys, but the booking of it kind of intrigues me. Whoop, what happened here? <laughs> Your camera guy go went went on a close up of your cigar. It like it went for your Son cigar. Of a b well, just put it in your mouth. The camera will follow it. <laughs> Wait a minute. There it is. Watch this. I didn't go anywhere, but it, no, it intrigues me to where they're going to go with this, and because I've never seen, you know, most angles follow a set pattern, but this one's not doing that. And I want to see where they go with it. I really do. I, I love that Drew McIntyre now has just become completely unhinged. Like, this is a man who interrupted the post-show uh, panel. Not not the media scrum, which where CM Punk was going to be. I'm, I'm, I was expecting an angle there. Instead, they shoot the angle with him interrupting, you know, Big E and Wade Barrett and Jackie Redman. And he ends up back elbowing Adam Pierce in the process, which had people oohing and on. Uh, and then you had to get Wade Barrett in there, you're like getting physical, like holding, like holding the man back. Like, hey, yo, we we cool, we're friends. We're back in the day. You hit Adam Pierce one more time, you're never gonna get CM Punk again. Now he's been suspended. Uh, so now he's got to do the whole, you know, I'm gonna show up and you know, show off how bad raw security is again, and you know, we'll, we'll that that whole trope. But you know, don't get me they... started on that incompetent general manager Adam Pierce, CM Punk has screwed over Drew three different times. All he did was get fined once, and his dumb self wanted to grab up Drew McIntyre when he's screaming at CM Punk through a camera that I know where your family lives, which was <laughs> great stuff. Yeah. And yeah. he's gonna he's gonna get mad because he put his hands on a competitor and that competitor hit him with a back elbow. He didn't know it was Adam Pierce. Like, Adam Pierce, that's your fault. Yeah. How dare he, he suspend Drew McIntyre? I'm I stand up for Drew. Hashtag stand up for Drew in the comment section. Yep. That's kind I'll of the beauty it. part about this is even though Drew is the heel, like he's the one that's been wronged a lot. But, but he's this. kind of turning. He's he's going to be that tweener. I'm telling you. Yeah. Because of people I, can because, see because that he, he got screwed. Days, Wrestling fans nowadays appreciate good work, whether you're a heel or or a baby face. Like, and and look, Drew McIntyre has been on the right side of things. What what's going to be interesting to see is what this does with Seth Rollins uh, moving forward, because he is now going to be equally as obsessed. I don't think it's going to be a major hit uh, for him not being able to challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship, because I don't see Damian Priest beating Gunther at at SummerSlam. Uh, whatsoever. Again, you know, to, to steal a, a Triple H analogy, I think the GPS coordinates have already been put in. It, it's Cody and Rocket at, at WrestleMania next year. And after that, it's it's Gunther versus whoever. And Gunther is probably going to retain and go on a lengthy title run. I think that's why Triple H this year kind of looked at the Money in the Bank briefcase as, as kind of a an obstacle that he needed to get out of the way. Because of the of the six competitors who was in that match, if, if you're not going to put the title on Drew McIntyre, which would not have made a whole lot of sense unless CM Punk was not going to be healthy enough that there was a real risk that he was going to miss SummerSlam. Then you could have put Drew versus Gunther and have CM Punk screw him against Gunther, but then that weakens Gunther's world title win, and it saddles McIntyre with another abbreviated World Heavyweight Championship run. At least this one would have been longer than five minutes, but I don't think that booking makes a ton of sense. And then are we expecting any of... Jay Uso, Andrade, Carmelo Hayes, well, Ch Chad Gable, maybe. I can make an argument that Chad Gable would have made sense cashing in on Gunther before July next year. But yeah. like anybody else in that match, I don't see them as Triple H has it as a priority for those guys to be world heavyweight champion within the next 12 months. That's why I don't consider this a waste. I think it was utilized in a different and creative way other than, well, let's make somebody. 
They just did that with Damian Priest three months ago. They don't need to be that formulaic and do it every single year. I think they they did a smart thing with the Money in the Bank briefcase this year. Yeah, and because they use the woman's Money in the Bank briefcase to elevate somebody, it makes it lesser of a blow. I don't. I also don't agree with the whole oh, it wasted a catch in or wasted yeah. the briefcase. They got, they got fifty. They got fifty one more weeks to fix it if it, they mess up. Yeah. And, and look, I may I may feel differently later. If Gunther doesn't win the title at SummerSlam, then I'm going to go, okay, uh, now I'm confused. But, like, the only person to me that made sense to win money in the bank, if you were going to keep it on them for a, a, at least a little bit or have an, a, a, another unsuccessful cash-in or a successful cash-in, was a guy who wasn't even the ma- in the match. I cannot believe they didn't put Finn Balor in this thing, considering the way that his rivalry with Damian Priest is going. You could have had Priest versus Gunther, and then have Finn use his money in the bank to screw that whole mess up and either cost, lose the match for Damian or win the World Heavyweight Championship. There's a number of different ways they could have gone. It made it made a ton of sense and opened up so many avenues to have Finn Balor be Mr. Money in the Bank this year. But they didn't even put the man in the damn match. None of the outside of Drew McIntyre and with CM Punk's health in question, none of those guys made sense uh, winning the briefcase and, and having a successful cash in over the next 12 months. So I think they made the right move. 